All right, hello everyone. We're going to give everybody a couple of minutes to roll in here and to have an opportunity to get settled in. Probably give them about two or three minutes here that okay. we can make sure I see the numbers going up. All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Kristen Dickerson. I am the past president of OACAC and your facilitator today. Um, so this is our uh, one of our virtual college explorations, and we are visiting with Rose Holman today. So you know this is the Zoom webinar feature, so your microphone and your camera are off, but you will be able to ask questions by clicking the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Uh, might be at the top of the screen, depending on which, which format you're using. Uh, we encourage you to sign up for more sessions after this one. This session will end at 2.45, and there will be a recording available afterwards. So if you do not get an opportunity to stay for the whole thing or your internet cu cuts out, we'll make sure that all of the participants receive that afterward. So with that being said, Jill, I'll turn it over to you and I will stop sharing my screen in the All right. room is yours. All right. Thanks, Kristen. I really appreciate uh -huh. it. Hi, everybody. I want to thank you for joining us today. I know this is um, doing a college search during these times can be rather daunting. So I really appreciate you tuning in, especially because I know you're probably tired of being on your computers. So um, as you're preparing for this college search, I wanted to take a few minutes at the beginning of this session to talk to you a little bit about how Rose Holman might be a little different from other schools that you're looking at. And I'm going to start by saying that Rose is a very collaborative institution. Now, what I mean by that is that at Rose Holman, we do not cap our majors. So no matter what you choose, you are guaranteed your major and you don't declare your major until your sophomore year and you can change your major at any time. Now, how this makes us a little bit different is in your freshman year, your classmates are going to be helping you with your homework in calculus and physics and you'll be studying together because there's no competition to beat anybody else out for that slot. So I think that's important. It's an important question to ask any admissions office is, if I'm admitted to your school or school of engineering, will you guarantee, my ma guarantee me my major? And the answer at Rose is yes, we will. Secondly, I think we're a little bit different than maybe some of the schools you're looking at because all of our classes are 30 students or less. And that was even pre-COVID. So once COVID hit and all of our students are back on campus right now, our classes are sitting at 20 to 22 students. So we did uh, reduce that a little bit for safety precautions. But all of our classes are 30 students or less, and that includes your inter introductory um, physics, chem, calculus, et cetera. And all of our classes are taught by PhD faculty. So you're getting the best of the best knowledge. We do not have any classes taught by TAs or GAs at Rose Holman. And even our faculty teach the lab. So that might make us a little bit different. Another way that we could differ a little bit is the, um, the culture that we have at Rose Holman. And what I mean by that, it's a very close knit community. And I'm sure a lot of schools say that, but at Rose Holman, here's how you can see a close knit community manifest itself. Students don't lock their residence hall doors at Rose. You can, be, um, you can be walking down the hallway in one of the residence halls, everybody's doors probably open. They even leave their doors unlocked when they go to class. Along the lines, Rose Holman was created, um, created this community of trust and respect. And we've been able to continue to do that in 2020. In fact, you can be studying in the library on your laptop leave, go get something to eat and come back and your laptop is right there. So as students come into Rose, one of the things that we uh, 
the expectation that is placed on them is that they will be a positive contributing member of the community. And so that does the campus culture probably makes us a little bit different. We are a school of about 2100 math, science and engineering students from all over the country and about 11 different countries as well. You also can minor in something that has nothing to do with math, science, or engineering, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Now, every college campus has an innovation space. That doesn't make us any different. We have two big innovation spaces. We have the Brandom Innovation Center and the Kramer Innovation Center. And that those facilities house our competition teams, our makers lab space, as well as senior design projects or any engineering design projects. So I'm going to share my screen here and you will see a picture of this is the Branham Innovation Center. There we go. That young man in the middle there is Tim Balls. Tim currently works at SpaceX. We have 14 alums working at SpaceX right now. But in our Branham and, and Kramer Innovation Centers, the competition teams include our Grand Prix Formula One racing team, our SAE mileage team, human powered vehicle, concrete canoe. In the Kramer Innovation Center, we have our four robotics teams, which are air, land, underwater, and Mars rover. Our underwater robotics team several years ago competed in the world championships and got to travel to the Netherlands. So students will spend a lot of their time in the evenings in these innovation centers and they're open till about 2 a.m. every day. You can see a little bit on the screen about our rankings. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. We were very fortunate enough um, two days ago to find out that we've been ranked the number one undergraduate engineering college again in the country for the 22nd year. So we're happy about that. It tells us more than anything, it validates that we're doing something right. Um, 2,200 students, one to 13 professor and student ratio. The average class size is about 20. So even though our largest class is class size is 30, in most of your majors, you're gonna have about 20 students. One of the things that we pride ourselves at Rose is that you get the opportunity as underclassmen to do research with our professors, to do a lot of hands-on work. And that's another thing that might make us a little different from some of the other schools that you're looking at. For example, we have a nanotechnology lab. At any other school, you wouldn't be able to work in that nano lab until you're probably a junior, or senior in college, or maybe even a graduate student. At Rose Holman, you're gonna get the opportunity to work in that as a freshman. And I like to tell the story about, Kayla's story is a, was an engineering physics major for us who went to work for a company in Arizona. And shortly after she started there, she became a project manager. And one of the reasons they picked her to be a project manager is all the experience they were looking for, she had actually had as an underclassman at Rose Holman, and they didn't have to spend any time training her. So you really are getting that hands-on experience at Rose. 19 different undergraduate STEM degrees, including optical engineering, engineering design. Uh, five of our majors were most recently ranked as number one in the country, and that was mechanical, civil, um, chemical, electrical, and computer engineering were all ranked number one recently. Our classes, like I mentioned before, are all taught by faculty. 99% of them have a PhD and they have an open door policy. So our faculty are here from like eight or nine in the morning till five in the afternoon. A lot of, of the larger institutions, you may have trouble finding your professor because they only have an hour or two here and there for office hours. Our faculty are actually dedicated to the students and are there all day. If you're interested in something outside of math, science, or engineering, we have 15 minors that have nothing to do with the STEM field. You can minor in art or theater or entre entrepreneurship, East Asian studies, 
and we offer over 150 humanities classes at Rose. So we really are trying to shape individuals and allow them to have that very well-rounded experience at Rose. Our Center for Global Engagement oversees our study abroad, and there's just a few uh, countries listed there. If you'd like to learn more about studying abroad, you can go to that website, Center for Global Engagement. You can even search by major and see what countries there are that maybe facilitate taking classes in your major while you're abroad. In fact, if you're interested in mechanical engineering or international computer science, you can study in Germany in your junior year. Or you can simply do a uh, study abroad that has nothing to do with your major and it's more of a cultural experience. So that website is great for listing both by major and countries that you might be interested in. Our Center for Diversity Inclusion it's no secret, just like everybody else, we're trying to um, enhance our diversity on campus. We brought in our second largest female class this year and we continue to uh, look for passionate individuals about STEM and uh, those may be from underrepresented populations. Career services. That's probably the, the office that you're most interested to hear about because I'm sure most of you would love to have a job after you graduate from college. Well, things are a little bit different at Rose Holman and maybe some other places. When you come to Rose, if you choose Rose down the line, you'll have an academic advisor that helps you with your schedule, study abroad, anything else that you might have in the way of the academic area. And then you'll also have a career services advisor that is assigned to you based on your major. That career advisor will help you with mock interviews, professional resume, and get you prepared for one of the many career fairs we have on campus. We do have three major career fairs on campus. Those are our largest events. The next one coming up is the first week of October, and there will probably be about 280 companies there recruiting students for both internships and jobs after graduation. Our internships are in June, July, and August, and they're all paid. So the companies that do recruit physically on our campus are offering paid internships. And there are also co-ops and research experiences through these companies as well. So you wanna make sure you take advantage of your career advisor as well as the career fairs. Um, in addition to that, let's talk a little bit about the internships. So at some institutions, internships and co-ops are required. They are not at Rose Holman. However, we do strongly encourage our students to participate or to garner internships and co-ops. So 94% of our students do at least one experience, 70% do two or more, and 31% do three or more. And you can see the average salaries there. Um, more than anything, what companies are telling us are that our students can hit the ground running in these internships because they have that hands-on experience as freshmen and sophomores there at Rose Hallman. And talk a little bit about graduating because one of the things that we pride ourselves on is our placement rate. On the day of graduation, 93% of our students are, that are graduating already have either an accepted job offer or have been accepted into grad school. About 80% of our students go into the industry and work initially and 20% initially go on to grad school but most of our students do go back and get their masters, but they have the company pay for it. So there were 355 companies that physically recruited on our campus last year, but we worked with over 800 companies from California to New York to Florida, Texas, and in every major possible. I found it interesting of the 450 Graduates that we had last year, they accepted positions at 357 different companies. So if you're looking for a specific employer or want to know if they recruit on our campus, if you go to the website, the Office of Career Services, you can actually search by major and find out what companies recruit on our campus, 
what companies hired our students last year, what the high offer was in your major, what the low offer was, and what the average accepted offer was for that particular major. So that is a phenomenal website that you should check out by major. And listed below there are just some of the top companies that recruit on our campus, and you'll see those from all different, uh, all different majors. Graduate salary information. The national average starting salary for 2019 was $50,004. Rose Holman's average starting salary last year was $73,084. So um, when you're looking at the cost of a college and the investment in your future, it's important to also consider um, internships, co-ops, employability and average starting salaries. Now, even though Rose Holman is rigorous and we're gonna challenge you to be the best critical thinker and problem solver that you can be, there's also a lot of fun at Rose. So we have over 90 different clubs. We have everything from a board game club, an esports club, those probably are not surprising to you, but we also have a square dancing club, salsa dancing, Frisbee golf, um, just about any club you could possibly think of we have on our campus. And if we don't, it only takes two students and a faculty advisor to start a new club. We are a division three school and we have 20 division three sports teams and 60% of our students participate in intramurals. If you had to ask me, that's one of the things that I think we do very well at Rose is create opportunities for students to be active. So we, last year we offered 35 different rec sports or intramural opportunities. And those, those ran the gamut of um, intramural soccer, home run derby, to battleship canoe, which is um, a really fun intramural event that takes place in the pool and you're trying to dump other people in their canoes. We have a rock climbing team, as you can see that young man right there. So anything that you could possibly be interested in, and even if it's just for fun or to be active, students participate in intramurals, and they usually do it by residence hall floor, but you don't have to. Um, interesting fact from last year, the caffeine consumed, my guess is that it will be way up this year. Our students are back on campus. We're excited about that. They came back two weeks ago. Everything is looking great, but I have a feeling they're going to be drinking a lot more coffee. So if you're interested in the performing arts, we have about 400, of our, 400 students in our student body that are either part of a band or a choir or the drama club. We have a very robust performing arts um, club or organization at Rose. In fact, we have a multi-million dollar performing arts center. Our drama club puts on three productions a year, either two plays and a musical or two musicals and a play. And then we have various bands. The one thing we don't have is a marching band. And yes, we have enough students on campus that we could have a marching band, but we also know how much time is invested in marching band and we don't feel like that's a good fit with the engineering curriculum. So, but we do want you to be involved in anything that you could possibly want to do at Rose Holman and those opportunities are open to everyone. You do not have to be a music minor or any kind of a performing arts minor to participate in anything at Rose. There's a picture of our football team. Unfortunately, they're not playing right now. Their season got pushed to the spring and their schedule was recently released. So they will start play, I think the first Saturday in March, as long as the weather holds out. We do have 11 Greek chapters. We have eight fraternities and three sororities. Most of the students that are in fraternities and sororities often continue to live in the residence hall, but we do have Greek houses on campus. And all of our Greek chapters have a community service component to them. So they're unique in that way too. 
Student Government Engineers Without Borders. Our Engineers Without Borders is currently working in Ghana right now. And if you love to write, we have the student newspaper called the Rose Thorn. Now, let me tell you or talk to you a few minutes about the application process. This, quite frankly, is not going to look a lot different than probably any other school that you've been attending their session. But we are a member of the Common App, so that application is available now. We have two deadlines, the early action application deadline, which is non-binding, and that's November 1st. And then we have the regular decision application deadline of February 1st. Now, I always tell students, when you're thinking about applying to colleges, if you think Rose is in your top tier of colleges, I would encourage you to apply early action because of the early action decision period has the most advantages for financial assistance. So all students that are admitted to Rose Holman receive a merit scholarship. That will be based on your information on your common application. But those students that are admitted in early action can then apply for additional scholarship money. So you don't want to miss out on any opportunities for financial assistance. So we want to make sure you hit that early action deadline if, if Rose is in your top tier of schools. Like I said, you still have until May 1st to make your decision. If you do apply early action and everything is into us by November 1st, we will let you know no later than December 15th. And then in January, you'll get your financial aid award, which will include your merit scholarship and any need-based aid and loans. And the things that, the documents that are needed to complete your application, it's the Common App or we do have our Go Rose application. We do not have a preference between these two applications. We need your high school transcript from your counselor and that's an unofficial transcript at this point and they all know how to upload it into Parchment or Naviance. We need one letter of recommendation. So choose a teacher or a counselor that knows you well that can speak to your aptitude for learning and your character because once again character is important at Rose Holman. You may submit up to two letters of recommendation but one is required and then the application fee. You notice on there we don't have test scores. We are test preferred for this year but test optional so we will process and make a decision on your application even if you don't have a test score. If you do have test scores and you'd like to include them and self-report them on the application, you are more than welcome to, but it will not hurt you if you don't have test scores for this coming year. For the fall of 2021 and for the next year when students are applying, um, if you're going to go to school in 2022, we have not made any decisions yet about tests, but we'll keep you posted on that. The admissions requirements, four years of English, four years of math, two years of social sciences, those are pretty, pretty standard. One year of biology, one year of chemistry, and one year of physics. If for any reason you cannot complete one of those requirements, then on your application, you need to tell us, for example, hey, I could not complete physics because it, was a, it conflicted with my schedule but I plan to take physics at a local community college later. So all we really need is your plan of action on how you will complete that requirement prior to August of the year you're enrolling. So you even have the summer after your senior year to complete the requirement. And that's all we need and we will go ahead and make a decision on your application. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen right now and open this up because more than anything, I want this to be about you. And um, I would like for you to ask me any questions in the chat. If test scores are on the high school transcript but student does not send from the testing company, how is that looked at? That's a great question. We are going to do our best not to consider the test scores at all in the application process this year. Um, I know some schools do put it on the transcript, 
but in no way, you know, obviously we may see it, but in no way will your test hurt you this year. So hopefully that's, that's helpful and that answered your question. How about any other questions? I'll give you a couple minutes to, how would you describe the students that are most successful at Rose? Hey, you know what? That's a great question. And, and here's how I think a successful student, what a student looks like at Rose that is successful. And that is the student that will ask for help. If you don't understand something um, that your instructor went over in physics, then you need to go ask them in their office. You need to say, hey, you know, I didn't quite understand this principle or this theory. Can you go over it with me again? Our professors, just like our student body, leave their um, office door open. So you have that opportunity to go in and ask them anything, anytime. And what we have found at Rose is that students are more likely to go in and ask a professor a question if their door is open. Because oftentimes if the door's shut, the student will say, oh, I don't want to bother them. You know, everybody else probably understood it, but I didn't. And that's not the way it works at Rose. Our professors are here. We're a teaching institution. They are here for the students. So in a successful student is one that will advocate for themselves and go ask for help when they need it. And then the other thing that makes a successful student at Rose is just one that's good at time management because you have to figure out how to balance your classes. A typical course load at Rose is about four classes a day. And Wednesdays are our lab day. You might have one class like a physics class, but it's set aside for labs. So those students that are good at time management are also very successful at Rose. So that's a great question. Thank you. Any other questions out there? I'll keep giving you a couple minutes. I don't envy any of you going through this college search, especially doing as much virtually, but I would like to mention that Rose Holman is opening back up for in-person visits tomorrow. We're limiting, limiting our numbers to 12 students a day, six in the morning, six in the afternoon. There'll be three time slots or two time slots in the morning, 8.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m and then in the afternoon, 1.30 and 2.30, you'll be allowed to bring two people with you, that's the max, because we're keeping our presentations down to nine people. So if you're interested in visiting the campus in person, feel free to come over, you can sign up online. If you just go to the Rose Holman Admissions page and hit visit, there are two ways to visit, in person or via a call choose in person and there will be 12 slots per day that you can sign up for. So we're really excited for students to start seeing our campus again because honestly, as you're going through this college search virtually, I don't think you get a really good feeling of an engineering school unless you can get on campus and see the innovation centers and talk to the students. You will, if you decide to visit campus, you'll have an on-campus presentation from admissions and then a student will take you on tour. They will be able to take you everywhere except the residence halls. We are still trying to protect our own students, so we won't be taking visitors through the residence halls, but you can see the innovation space, the classrooms, the labs, et cetera. So hopefully some of you can get over to visit. And I am the counselor for Ohio, so I'm the one that will be reading all your applications. And um, so if you ever have any questions, you can reach out to me individually too. And I'm happy to answer anything that you might not want to put in the chat today. Let's see, any, any other questions? We'll give it a minute. Give you a couple minutes here. Just like for you, this is really hard for me because I'm used to visiting high schools in Ohio and I miss that. I miss that a great deal and, and going to the Duke Energy Center, the fair there and, 
and just bopping around Cleveland and Columbus and Dayton and Cincinnati and all over. So um, my email is my last name, which is Butcher, B-U-T-C-H-E-R, at rose-holman.edu. And if you have any questions outside of this chat, please don't hesitate to reach out to me individually and I'll be happy to answer any question. The last thing I'd like to offer is if you would like a curriculum guide uh, from Rose on a particular major, please send me an email sometime after this chat in the next few days and I will send you an electronic version of the curriculum guide for you to look at. The front page will talk about um, just the major in general, but the back side or the side, the second side will be all the classes that you take to get your degree at Rose. And every degree at Rose Holman is a four year degree um, major. So you will finish all the requirements for your major within four, four years and you can't be closed out of any classes that you need for your major. So that's important to consider too. So like I said, please shoot me an email and I'll be happy to send you a curriculum guide. Um, yeah, and you know, electronically. I'm gonna look one more time. I do not see any more questions. So I'm gonna let you go because I am sure you all are tired of being on the computer, but I wanna thank you a great, great deal for attending today. It really means a lot to me that you took the time to, to listen to our presentation and hopefully I'll see you on campus sometime soon. So I'm gonna let StriveScan finish this out and uh, good luck to you all on your college search. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jill. I appreciate it. Uh, we have one more slide for you here. Um, we just wanna thank you for attending. There, after you close the window and sign out of the presentation, um, you'll get a quick survey. Again, we'll encourage you to sign up for more sessions and this recording will be available at oacac.org after this session is done. So if you need any review on any of that, then that will be where you will go to see that. Um, again, thank you all so much and um, we appreciate your time.